If you please uh, rise and, and join us in the singing of the processional hymn, Spirit of God, found in the black, uh, the faith we sing, 2117. <laughs>
be seated. Well, good morning and welcome to worship this morning. I'm Reverend Cindy Briggs Biondi, the pastor here at St. Mark's, and we're glad that you are joining us in worship. Now, today is a special day on multiple counts. First, it's Pentecost. It's the day where we celebrate the birth of the church. Second, we are honoring and recognizing our graduates this morning. We have many who have worked very hard to get to where they are, and so we want to take some time to recognize them. Third, we're also dedicating our new stained glass window uh, created by Chris Dutch, who is here with us with his wife today. And then finally, after worship is over, we're going to be having a block party out in the parking lot with hot dogs and popcorn and, of course, cake because it's a party celebrating the birth of the church. We have a bounce house for the kids, balloons, other games, and it's just going to be a good time to, to spend time together and celebrate and have fun. And so we are glad that you are here to join us for those things this morning. One other announcement, um, a reminder that this coming weekend is the West Virginia Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church, and so I will be up there attending conference. Miranda Neighbors is our lay delegate, and she will be up there this weekend. And I believe Sydney, Sydney, you are a youth delegate, right? Yep, so you're going to be up there too, which is awesome. And then, of course, our retired clergy will, will be up there because they're members of the annual conference as well. Um, and so, with that said, Next week, we're going to have some special guests in worship. Maybe you know them, um, Cece and Bobby Brown. Cece and Bobby Brown are two wonderful people um, who I have known for a while, uh, and actually their son, Ryan, was really good friends with Derek um, growing up going to SYC, the summer youth event in the United Methodist Church. And Cece and Bobby are going to come and share a little bit of their story, um, and they are very involved in the recovery community. And so they have a story to share and probably also some challenges to give to us as a congregation. So I hope that you will be here when there are very special guests next week um, while I and others are away for annual conference. Well, let's go ahead and begin this celebration of worship as Mark leads us in the call to worship. I have the power, so I'm going to ask if you're able to please stand for the reading of the call to worship, as you're able. The Spirit descends like a dove, bringing peace to unite the world in a just and caring community. The Spirit spreads like fire, bringing energy for witnessing to the love of God. You may be seated. And now if you would join me in unison with our prayer for illumination. Spirit of truth, whom the world can never grasp, touch our hearts with the shock of your coming. Fill us with desire for your disturbing peace and fire us with longing to speak your uncontainable word for Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning. At this time, I'd like to invite all of our youngest friends to come on down and join me. Go ahead and sit. Awesome. How are you all this morning? Good. So I've been inside for a little bit, but is it starting to get warm outside? Yeah, when I got here, it was, it was not cold, and it wasn't quite chilly, but it was definitely a little colder than it has been. But you're saying it's starting to get warm outside? Yeah, I have a feeling it's going to be a pretty hot day. Well, since it's starting to turn to summer, and the temperature is rising outside and inside most of our homes, a lot of us turn to things like this. What, are, what is this? It's a fan, right? How does a fan help us keep cool? Yeah. It 
It makes it a little bit better. It, it creates a nice breeze, right, and cools everything down. I'm actually a little warm right now, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. Well, we'll talk about that. All right. Do you see any air coming out of this? Can you see the air? No, right? We can't see air. Well, if we can't see the air, how do we know that that's, that fan is working? We can feel it. Yeah, there's several ways that we can tell, right? One way is with these streamers here, right? What's going on here? They're blowing, right? E yep, even though we can't see the air, the fan is spinning round and round, and it's forcing air out through, and that air we can see is blowing the streamers. Another way that we can see the fan is working is we can feel it, right? If I put my hand up here, or if you all like raise your hand, can you feel that breeze? Yeah, we can feel the breeze. We can't see it, but we can feel it. And also, especially with these big box fans, we can't see the air, but what happened? You can hear it, right? You can hear that, and you can hear that air coming through. Have you ever been outside and you just heard a big gust of wind come through? Yeah, we can't see the air, but we can hear it. Well, today is a very special day that churches celebrate. It's called the Day of Pentecost, and Pastor Cindy mentioned that a second ago. And so here's the story of how this whole Pentecost thing began. The Bible tells us that on the day of Pentecost, Jesus' followers were all gathered together in one place, kind of like we are today. We're all gathered here together. And God sent the Holy Spirit to give them the power to teach other people about Jesus. Now, they couldn't really see the Holy Spirit, so how did they know that the Holy Spirit was there? The Bible says that they knew that the Holy Spirit was there because they could hear it, just like we can hear our fan going. They heard the sound of a mighty rushing wind coming from heaven. They couldn't see the Holy Spirit, but they could hear the sound of the wind, just like we can hear the sound of the box fan. Then the Bible says that they saw what seemed to be flaming tongues of fire that came and rested on each of their heads. It came and sat on each of their heads. They couldn't see the Holy Spirit still, but what could they see? They could see the fire, right? They could see the fire and the flaming tongues, just like we can see our red ribbons. Finally, the Bible t tells us that they knew the Holy Spirit was there because they could feel its power. When they were filled with the Holy Spirit, God gave them the ability to speak in languages they didn't know so that they could tell everyone about Jesus. Through the Holy Spirit, the disciples and the apostles were given incredible power. They couldn't see the Holy Spirit, but they could definitely feel its presence in their life. The Holy Spirit is still with us today. We can't see it, but we can hear it as it speaks to our hearts. We can see it moving in our lives, and we can feel the power of its presence as it guides us to live every single day. So we'll talk a little bit more about the Holy Spirit when we go back to our classroom, but let's pray. Hey God, thank you for sending your Holy Spirit to be our teacher and our guide. Help us to listen and obey the Spirit as it teaches us and as it directs us and as it guides us to obey your Son. And in your Son's name we pray. Amen. All right, we're actually going to hang here for a little while, so why don't you guys go ahead and sit up against that wall right there. Can you do that for me? We'll head back in, our, in just a second. So I, also, as Pastor Cindy said, we have the wonderful honor and privilege to recognize our graduates. At St. Mark's, we believe and understand that education and furthering education is an incredible blessing and an incredible privilege. And this is education of all types and at all times. It doesn't matter if you're 18, if you're 25, if you're 50, 75, however old, we understand that education is something that we gain as we go throughout life in all times and in all places. Because education not only opens doors, 
but it also makes us more complete people. The Bible is, itself is filled with comments and instructions on being smart and wise people. Some of my favorite sections of the Old Testament are the wisdom literature. And it talks about this idea that being smart is having knowledge up here, right? Being smart is knowing lots and lots of things, but wisdom is knowing how to use that knowledge to live a very full life that honors God completely. And so this morning we have the wonderful privilege to to recognize and honor some of our graduates from both high school and college who are continuing to fill themselves with knowledge, continuing to fill themselves with smarts, and we hope to send them out into the world where they can continue to gain wisdom about how to praise and glorify God through the knowledge that they've gained. We have four high school graduates this morning, and as I call, if you are here this morning, I know that we had several that weren't going to be able to attend both college and high school. Um, as I call your names, you're welcome to come up and grab a, uh, a gift from the church for graduating. For our high school graduates, um, our gift starts, well, it starts with this lovely laundry basket, um, but it starts with a NRSV journaling Bible that we hope will be able to um, allow you to build a little bit more knowledge and wisdom about the Bible. We've got all kinds of other things that you might not think of if you're going off to college or if you're moving in somewhere. Um, just, to, just to give you a hand, we've got some Clorox wipes and some Tide Pods. We've got some Febreze because we all know how stinky college dorms can get. Um, other laundry materials, uh, dryer pods, command strips because these are vital and so important. Um, and we also have a little tiny first aid kit and uh, the two gifts that you will be absolutely most excited for. First off, ramen to start off your college diet and a little graduation bear, which is just oh so cute. So this morning, if we have any high, of our high school graduates uh, with us, I, as I call your name, you're welcome to come on up to the front. Graduating high school uh, from St. Mark's is Kylie Michael, Morgan Brown, Mary Young, and Dylan Fortner. Congratulations. Yes. Let's give our high school graduates a round of applause. <laughs> congratulations, Mor congratulations, Morgan and Dylan, for sending delegates to the church. Our college graduates, we have Alex Bunn, Abby... <laughs> oh, I should have said, our college graduates, uh, their gift from the church is a collection of C.S. Lewis classic books. Um, it has Mere Christianity, Screw Tape Letters, Miracles, A Grief Observed, The Great Divorce, The Problem of Pain, The Abolition of Man, and The Four Loves. If you never ever open it, it'll at least good on, look good on your shelf. We have either graduation bears, graduation owls, or graduation koalas with some Amazon gift cards, and a first aid kit, because you can never have too many of those. Congratulations, Alex. We also have Abby and Emily Henry, Ben Carnes, em Emmy McPhail, and I'm going to say this wrong and I'm so sorry, Lumina Fiavronte? Okay, close enough. I've been given approval. Congratulations, yeah. Let's give our college graduates one more round of applause. Jake has also just graduated from seminary with his MDiv, and so of course we don't want to forget Jake, um, you know. <laughs> 
what do you get a guy who has everything? Um, well, I'll just go ahead and open it for you. First of all, something very practical of use, a nice book stand. So, you know, when you're continuing to study, as I know you do a lot, um, you can prop your books up and mark your pages. And then a little bit of a, a, more, a more fun gift, um, a t-shirt made just for you with all of your stats because you have leveled up. So for anybody who's a Dungeons and Dragons fan, um, these are like stats that you would have for a character when you play D&D. Notice, plus 10 to intellect, plus 10 to wisdom for completing seminary. Ooh, so, <laughs> so congratulations, Jake. So <laughs> We're proud of you. All right, friends, let's head back to our room. Our scripture reading today comes from Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every people under the heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each of one of them heard speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Fellow Jews, and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Word of God for the people of God. Let's pray. Oh God, this morning we ask that you would help us to hear you, to feel your spirit moving amongst us and within us, that you would remind us of who we are called to be as your church birthed by your spirit. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, yesterday, I went to go pick up the cake 
for today's block party. And it's on the cake, it says, Happy Birthday Church. Because today we are celebrating a birthday. And I took that cake home, and of course, Gus saw it and was really excited and was like, oh, Can I have cake? Is it a birthday? And I said, Yes, it is a birthday, but you gotta wait. You gotta wait till tomorrow when daddy brings you back over here so you can come to the party. Because today is a birthday party, a birthday party for the church. Well, I've been thinking a lot about birthdays and the way that we celebrate them every year. And every year they mark the day on which we were born. Having given birth just over six months ago now, birth is still pretty fresh on my brain. And one of the things that I can remember, and perhaps you can remember too if you've ever held a, a tiny, tiny baby, you can remember thinking and looking at them and wondering, what kind of person will they become? Who will they be? Well, Iggy and Hildy are really starting to um, exhibit their different personalities that they're growing into. Hildy, Hildy just yammers all the time. Da, bleh, da, bleh, da, bleh, da. She just talks to you, and she has no inside voice. Hildy has no chill. She's just always kind of exuberant and loud, even in the middle of the night. Iggy, on the other hand, she is a bit more reserved. She'll have these really great big smiles, but she's generally quieter. She's a little bit clingier, like she wants to be held by me or sit on my lap a lot more. Um, but she has just this grin that lights up the room. Their personalities are starting to become more evident, but I still wonder who are they going to become? Now, Gus is four and a half years old, and so his personality really has come through, and he's just a little ham. I mean, I, I would not be surprised in the slightest if he ends up being in, like, show choir or doing theater or something like that because he has this amazing dramatic flair to him that I love. Who, who does a little baby become? Who have we become over the course of our lives? Well, today we look back on the birth of the church, which we've heard in this story in Acts chapter 2. The birth of the church. The Holy Spirit comes and rests on the heads of all of those who had been gathered together like tongues of fire. There was a violent rushing wind, and everybody who was around could understand what was being proclaimed. But what did that community look like? Who was the early church created to be? What was the church supposed to be like when it grew up? That's a question I've been thinking of a lot about these days, too. I don't know about you, but I can barely turn on the news. In fact, I've not even been turning on the news. I've been just reading it so I can take it in a little bit at a time. But it feels like day after day, more news of war, more news of violence, more news of mass shootings, more death, more pain, more suffering. And I find myself asking the question, who is the church supposed to be in a world that looks like this, in a world where we hear about the killings of 19 children. Who are we supposed to be as a church in a world that is constantly at war, in a world that is constantly seeing exploitation? Who were we born to be? Today, today this is what I invite us to ponder as we celebrate the birthday of the church. 
A few weeks ago, we heard what happened further on in chapter 2 of Acts, that snapshot of that first community that lived together and shared everything in common and made sure that, that nobody went without, that anybody who had any kind of need had that need met. And this was all through the inspiration, through the work, through the power of the Holy Spirit. This was a community that was called to live differently than the world around it. This was a community that was not called to might or force or a community to return violence with violence. This was a community called to compassion, to empathy, to a different way of living than the empire that surrounded it. I wonder, I wonder if we have forgotten who the church is, what the church is. You see, when the Spirit came, the Spirit came not only with inspiration or motivation, but with power, and a different kind of power than the world thinks of. When the world thinks of power, we think of having wealth and status, of being able to, um, you know, to take control of whatever we want in whatever manner we want. But the power of God given through the Holy Spirit is a power that is radically different. It's the same power that we see working through Jesus Christ when he was betrayed in the garden and Judas came and gave him that kiss and the soldiers came and Peter jumps up and grabs that sword and slices off the ear of the high priest's servant. And Jesus says, Peter, put away the sword. Those who live by the sword die by the sword. It's the same spirit that allowed Jesus to stand before Pilate to be questioned, to be demeaned. It's the same spirit that prompted Jesus to go carry his own cross to the place of death where he would be inflicted with pain with insults, with mocking, where his closest friends, for the most part, would abandon him. It was the same spirit that allowed Jesus, upon the cross, to look out at those who had put him there and to say, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. It's the same spirit that, through Jesus, conquered evil and violence, not through more evil and violence, but through self-sacrificial love. That same spirit is the one that is given to us, that gives birth to the church on Pentecost. That same spirit calls us, even when it is so tempting to say, well, I just want to fight back. I want, you know, maybe the best thing is for me to pick up a gun. Maybe the best thing is for me to be prepared to meet violence with violence when the moment comes. And trust me, I absolutely get that temptation. Because thinking about the alternatives of what could be is much too hard. But somehow, somehow, that same spirit that led Jesus to the cross is the same spirit that gives life to each of us. That says, I will raise you up. And that says, you will be a part of my kingdom. My kingdom where there is no more violence or hatred. Today, we celebrate the birth of the church We ask ourselves, as we hear that story, what was this fledgling church to become? Who was this baby, in a sense, going to be when they grew up? Well, the question is one that remains for us, because we are that fledgling church 
that has been in existence now for 2,000 plus years. Who, who are we called to be today? As we celebrate the birthday of the church, the gift of the Holy Spirit, and this vision of a different kind of community, how can we, how can we celebrate our rebirth into this new kind of community? We say, happy birthday, church, today. But may those words be more than just, you know, a passing nice thing to say or a sentimental thing to say. May we declare when we say, happy birthday, church, may we say that we are returning to the community that God has intended us to be through the power, through the gift of the Holy Spirit. In just a little bit, we're going to gather at the communion table. And that meal nurtures and nourishes us. That meal is a feast. That meal is a celebration of who we are that says, God is enough. God will equip us. God will feed us. God will nourish us. We don't need to be nurtured or nourished by anything other than the living spirit of God. May we take hope, may we take heart, and may we take that challenge seriously. Who are we as the church grown up? Amen.
Well, I want to invite um, Chris Dutch forward with me now for a couple of moments as we dedicate our new window. I think most of you have probably had a, a chance to see it out in the um, hallway looking out onto the courtyard. Uh, as, as you might remember, um, I don't know, it was a number of months ago now, uh, the water wall that was originally there was shattered by a rock. And as we thought about, well, what are we going to do about this? Are we going to replace the water wall, or is it time for something new? Um, we decided together to ask Chris if he would create a window for us to kind of help reflect a little bit of, of, of who, who we are. Um, and there's a, a great description um, hanging right next to the window in the hallway that you can go on and read that Chris prepared about the creation of the window. And it is, of course, titled, Let It Shine. And we decided that today was going to be a really good day to dedicate this window as the theme is letting your light shine. And what better way when the, when the subject matter is, is a candle than on Pentecost, this idea of when we ourselves are given the gift of the Holy Spirit and in a way become living candles, men to let our light shine in the world around us. And of course, it's, it's out on the courtyard, and so once we get the proper lighting, we should be able to, at night at least, <laughs> hopefully see some of that light shining. But um, if, you, if you come in here when the light is coming through it, you, it's a, there's a beautiful reflection of the light on the floor. And so it's our hope. Oh, yeah, you can see it down at the bottom of this, this image here, um, the way the light does, in fact, reflect and shine. Um, and so we're going to dedicate this window this morning, and I encourage you after worship to um, go take a closer look at it, to, to read um, what Chris wrote that's hanging next to the window and to just enjoy its beauty. Um, and let it be a reminder to us as a community to let our light shine, uh, not, not just while we're in here, because hide it under a bushel? No. <laughs> We're going to let it shine, and we want it to shine in the community around us. And so now we gather together in prayer. Siblings in Christ, today we seek God's blessing as we gather with thankfulness to dedicate our new stained glass window to the glory of God. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe. You made the whole earth for your glory. All creation praises you. We lift our voices to join the songs of heaven and earth, of things seen and unseen. You stretched out the heavens like a curtain. You divided the day from the night. You appointed times and seasons for work and rest, for tearing down and building up. You blessed your people through all generations and guided them in life and death. Abraham and Sarah, Moses and Miriam, Isaiah and all the prophets, Mary, mother of our Lord, Peter, James, John, and all the apostles, and all the saints and witnesses in your church of ages past in whom your spirit spoke and moved. Be with us now and bless us as we dedicate this stained glass window to your glory and praise. Grant us faith to know your gracious purpose in all things. Give us joy in them and lead us to the building up of your kingdom. You are the light that we are called to reflect. Let it shine in us and through us and around us that we may be a testament to your radical grace and reminders of your loving presence to a hurting world. Accept this window which we offer in thanksgiving. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now with Chris up here, would you all just take a moment to thank him for his work? <laughs> join me now in the prayers of the people. Loving God, we ask for the gift of your Holy Spirit to help us pray as we ought. Holy Spirit, help us. 
We ask for the energy and vision of your spirit for those who are tiring in the battle against injustice and oppression, for those exhausted by the struggle with poverty and hunger. Holy Spirit, help us. We ask for the hope and comfort of your spirit for those whose lives are overshadowed by pain or illness, for those whose lives are darkened by sorrow or bereavement. Holy Spirit, help us. We ask for the peace and joy of your spirit for those living in the shadow of war and violence, for those eaten up by guilt and anxiety and whose Christian life has become hard and dry. Holy Spirit, help us. We ask for the guidance and strength of your spirit for those uncertain how to use their time, talents, and gifts, for those tempted to do what is wrong. Holy Spirit, help us. We ask for the love and courage of your spirit, for those reaching out to comfort the distressed, for those reaching out to others with the good news of Christ. Holy Spirit, help us. Loving God, we ask for the assurances of your spirit to know your presence with us in our daily lives, in our relationships, in our work and service, in our worship, and in our times of joy and pain. Holy Spirit, help us. We lift up to you now those who we hold in our hearts, either silently or aloud. Holy Spirit, help us. Amen. As we move into the communion liturgy, I invite you now to use the pew cards that you find um, in, in the, the pew um, holders. Or if you'd like to follow along using the hymnal, it begins on page 12. <clears throat> As we come to communion this morning, just a, a word of how things are just a tiny bit different um, because of the way things are configured this morning. When you come forward to receive, um, which I and um, the other server will both be masked and gloved, you will receive a piece of bread from me, and then you'll receive a tiny cup of grape juice. Now, often we go then to this side of the sanctuary where there's a little basket, for you to put your, um, your used little juice glass. But today, we are going to go the other way. You'll notice the basket is on this side of the sanctuary. Um, so we just ask you to, to take note of that. This table is an open table, which means everyone is invited to come. It's not my table, it's not St. Mark's table, it's not the United Methodist Church's table, it's Jesus Christ's table. And he invites everyone who wishes to come. So Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Let us now stand where we are and offer one another signs of reconciliation and peace.
And now, as a forgiven and reconciled people, let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God. As the, us as the ushers come forward this morning and we receive our offering, know that the gifts you give make possible the ministries that we do. And as we seek to continue to expand ministry, to serve the community around us, to further our own spiritual development and, and, and um, deepening of our relationship with Christ, I invite you to consider how God God might direct your heart to give this day. The ushers would come. All things come from you, O God, and so now we give back to you that which is already yours. Bless the gift and the giver in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You can be seated.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. In the beginning, your spirit moved over the face of the waters. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. Your spirit came upon prophets and teachers, anointing them to speak your word. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. At his baptism in the Jordan, your Spirit descended upon him and declared him your beloved Son. With your Spirit upon him, he turned away the temptation of sin. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always, baptizing us with the Holy Spirit and with fire as on the day of Pentecost. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread and in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ. your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and fruit of the vine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood and empowered by the gifts of his spirit. By your spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, showing forth the fruit of the spirit until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. With the confidence of children of God, let us pray. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ, broken for us. This is the blood of Christ, shed for us. I invite those who are to assist me to come forward. And as we share in communion together, we'll invite the choir to come first. And then as you're led, feel led, you are invited to come forward and receive. Again, a reminder that the um, basket for the communion cups is on this side of the sanctuary this morning. Um, for those who need that, uh, which um, will be over here on the altar. So just uh, let me know if that is what you need. Oh, and we should switch sides. Since we're going that way today. But for
Oh God, you have met us at this table and you pour out your grace upon us. We pray now for those who are not here with us, for those who are at home, for those who are traveling, for those who are far away. We pray that they too would experience an outpouring of your grace in a tangible way this morning. Would you join me in the prayer after communion? Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Would you join us now in our closing song, This Little Light of Mine? from this place as the church of Jesus Christ birthed through the Spirit be a people who shine the light of God into a world that is hurting, that is broken, and into our own hearts that are hurting and broken. And may we go knowing that we are empowered to be a different kind of community. So let us today say happy birthday, church, as we continue the celebration out in the parking lot. Let us be who God has created us to be. Amen and amen. <laughs>